Okie dokie, this is our uh, gasset refillable LPG gas system. Uh, what we've got is a couple of uh, gas bottles and these bottles are designed so that you can fill them yourself. So you take them to a, uh, a fuel station, petrol station typically, um, that's got an LPG pump that's used for uh, filling cars or other vehicles that run an LPG um, and you can fill the bottles up yourself. So uh, the main reason we do that is so these are going to fit into our uh, motorhome. We've got a Heimer B544 motorhome, and we're going to fit these into the gas locker. Um, and it's because of the fact as you're going through different countries in Europe, you'll find that uh, they've all got different standards of um, regulator and uh, fitting on top of the gas bottle. So you end up if you don't have a system like this, you've either got to use the gas that you take out, use camping gas, which is quite expensive. Um, or you've got to keep getting different bottles, which is a bit of a faff. So we've got a couple of different size bottles. Um, the reason for that is because of the shape of the uh, the locker unit on our motorhome. So uh, I'll go and show you that when I, when I go and fit them. Um, the one on the left is an 11 kilogram bottle. Um, both of these bottles have got a safety cut off, meaning that you can't fill them above 80% of the capacity, um, which you need to do, otherwise they're, uh, they're unsafe. Um, so what it means is you can get about 21 litres of gas in the 11 kilogram one and about 12 litres of gas in the 6 kilogram one. So all together we can carry about 33, 34 litres of gas, something like that. So you can see here both the bottles have got a gauge on. These are pretty notorious for not being particularly good to be honest. There's even a, uh, a label on top of the bottle saying that uh, they're not a reliable gauge. So uh, just how good they'll be remains to be seen. Um, for this setup, we've got a. I'll just put my out again. Can't see it here because it's up at the uh, the van at the moment. But I'll show you when I go up there. We've got a an auto changeover, which will automatically switch from one bottle to the other, so we'll be able to easily tell when one bottle is uh, empty. Uh, and we use that to keep track of how much gas we've got. Okay, so moving on to how it's fitted. Uh, I should point out that I'm not a gas professional. I'm just a DIY installer. So. Uh, treat these instructions as such. There's lots of uh, video instructions on the Gasset website. If you go and have a look at them, they'll probably uh, give you some better better uh, detailed guidance on what you're supposed to do. And if you drop those guys an email, they're really good at uh, getting back to you. It's the website for them there. It's just gasset.co.uk. Okay, so what you've got is, this is the, the filler side. So that's the bit that's attached to the, uh, the filler uh, unit that we're going to use. Uh, and then that's the high pressure hose, the pigtail that goes up to the uh, regulator um, in the van. Regulator then converts it to low pressure for use inside the van. Uh, so they've both got one of the filler units and a pigtail. So for us, the pigtail will go up to our auto changeover unit. And then the filler, if I come back up and show you up here, what we've got is this hose. So that will connect to the filler side on one of the bottles and that will connect to the filler on the other bottle. Then you've got, there's a, you can get different lengths of this hose as meter long uh, that will come up to this end and then on that, so that end is where the filler goes. So what we've got, you can get different types of filler, we've got this one. There's a reason for having this particular one on our van because of the way that the, uh, the fitting is going to work, which I can show you a bit later on. Just crack it open with my, with my thumb. So basically that will screw into the end there. You see it's got an angle on it which is deliberate. Uh, and then you get, that bit will be fitted flush into the side of the van uh, with a screw in it which will just cap off. So you can see it's a relatively small uh, area that it takes up on the side of the van. And then in that goes one of these so that's the UK one. So you screw that in and then you fit the LPG gun to that. There's different ones across Europe, of course. So there's some different fittings here uh, that we've got from Gasset. That is the main one that we use when, when we've been abroad. Um, we've got a couple of others. We tend to find that if you go to a fuel station that uses something fairly weird, that they'll have some of these themselves. And we're going to a German one where they've got a big case out full of all sorts of different ones. Uh, so we've never had a, a case where we've been to a fuel station and not been able to fill up. 
Okay, just coming back to this um, filler part of the whole setup, um, this is a kind of critical bit, I guess, making this decision on how you're going to do this. So we've opted for uh, one of these units that fits on the outside of the van. So this will bolt through the skirt at the bottom of the van with that bit sticking through the skirt and then that going into the locker unit. Which means I need to drill a hole in the van and then drill four or more holes to bolt it in place. Which isn't really, uh, I'm not really looking forward to that to be honest, but it needs to be done. Um, the other kind you can get, the external one, is a, is a bigger hole. It's about this big uh, and you get like a recessed unit that's already got this bit built into it. As you can see it's got a thread as well so you can fit the other uh, fittings as well. Um, and the reason we didn't go for that is the size of it. So I'll show you in a bit, I've got a limitation on size on where I'm going to put mine. The other kind of fitting you can get is, it's, it's basically the same thing, but it's on a bracket that's mounted inside the locker unit itself. The advantage of that is you don't need to drill a hole in the side of your van. Um, and it's a simpler fitting. But the disadvantage is, uh, there's a, it, it's hard to say just how real the, the problem is. There's a possibility that if you've got this bit fitted inside the uh, locker unit, when you pull up to fill up, you need to open the locker door to expose this bit so you can get the LPG gun onto it. Um, and not all petrol station attendants know the difference between one of these refillable units that's designed for this kind of purpose, that's got the 80% cut off, and just normal tanks that someone's modified so that they can fill up themselves. So they get, they, I've never actually seen it, and we've filled up dozens of times. I've never seen it, I've heard the odd thing on forums, which I don't worry too much about, um, that some attendants have become nervous of people opening the locker door. So it's just there as a possible risk. It's a pretty small risk, I think. Um, the reason we've gone for the external one is because it was cheaper. Uh, <laughs> and uh, to be fair, we, we want to avoid that risk as well. Okay, this is our current uh, setup. So what we've got is a couple of lightweight gas bottles, um, ones that have to be refilled by someone else, ones you can't refill yourself. Uh, this is a 2001 Harmer B544 uh, on a double floor. Um, so what that means is, it creates a bit of limited space around the skirt for where we can put the filler unit. Um, so what I'm gonna have is, I'm gonna have the 11 kilogram bottle here, and the six here, I've had to buy 6 and 11 because of the fact that the um, regulator, let's back it in so you can actually see it, the regulator uh, for the van is there, so that would probably get in the way of 2 11s. Um, Gasset's uh, pre sales guys are really good, so we just sent them some photographs of this locker with a uh, tape measure across it so you could see how big it was and how big the skirt was on either side, and they've made a recommendation to go for an 11 and a 6. So that's the Back in again, that's the auto changeover unit that we'll keep. So that's attached to the regulator at the moment, so that'll all stay. These pigtails will come off and we'll attach those to the new bottles. Uh, and then we'll bring the um, filler pipe down and we've decided to put it. So the two options are this bit of skirt here, but that's quite flex. It's not a great deal of uh, support there. This bit over here is far more sturdy, uh, but it's not very big. So that's why we've gone for the small filler to just fill in there. Okay, so I'm going to get these bottles out and then uh, pop the others in and see how everything fits. Okay, okay that's the locker with the, uh, just the bottles out, so there's the uh, auto switch over valve. Um, and that's where the pigtails will connect to on either side of that. Uh, that's the regulator. Um, that's it really, the restraining straps. Fold the front down a bit to give me better access. So the filler unit for us is going to go here. See why it's on an angle so it can easily get the uh, pipe through this side without uh, uh, bending it too much. So I've got to be careful to try and get that. As you can see, I think that's how much space I've got, so I've got to get it in the right place um, when I put the hole in it. And I can see that when I put the hole through, it's probably not going to extend quite far enough back to have a nice clean hole in the side here, so uh, that might take a little bit of this out, but because the door comes down and will fit flush with this edge here, not really got a great deal of room and I don't want to mess the, uh, the pipe being hit by the door. The other option for these would be to actually fit the filler within the door itself on the front obviously 
Um, but then every time you open the door, the, uh, the pipe's being flexed, the filler pipe's being flexed, which I read is okay, but I just don't really fancy that if I can have a nice, fixed, clean unit where the, uh, the pipes are never getting flexed. Okie dokie, next step. Uh, there's, there's a few different types of these um, refillable LBG gas bottles and gas tanks that you can get. You can get ones that even go underneath the van if you want, but it's got a pretty low floor, so we've opted not to do that. The, the sort of leading one, if you like, if the leading brand name is Gaslo, um, which produce these yellow tanks. As far as I can tell, the Gasset and Gaslo kit is pretty much the same. Um, only uh, the biggest difference is the instructions that I've found so far. <laughs> I'm no expert on any of this stuff, so I don't really know if the spec of the bottles is different. I know they do braided hoses at Gaslo, but then Gasset claim that they're not compliant, so who knows. Um, the instructions with Gasset are non-existent. I haven't got any instructions whatsoever, so I'm going off the Gaslo instructions. Um, I've got some. Uh, I've had some good contact with the pre-sales guys at Gasla at Gasset even. Um, they provided some good advice on uh, on what to do. Uh, so I'm going to go off these instructions that I've downloaded. I've got them on my uh, my pad here. Um, and uh, and yeah, so that's just something to bear in mind if you do get the Gasset kit that uh, it comes zero with zero instruction. Okay, I've just popped the two bottles into the locker, um, see how they fit. See that's the 11 kilogram one on the right and that's the six on the left. So uh, I'm glad I sent those photographs off to the gas heat guys because it's pretty tight against the regulator that's bolted to the side of the van there. So if I tried to get two 11 kilograms in here I think I might have struggled. So that's good. Um, I'm now trying to just work out exactly how to orientate the bottles. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get them so that there aren't any kinks. So they're, they're the two pigtails that go from the um, on, on this unit from the uh, auto changeover valve, uh, and they come down to the, um, the the sort of takeoff bits, if you like. They've got the, uh, the shut-off valves on. I want the shut-off valves to be accessible and easy to get at, um, and I also want the uh, uh, float valve indicators to be uh, some, somewhere I can see them as well. At the moment they'll be facing backwards. Uh, I've realised you can pop them off but it doesn't help because they have to be popped back on in the same orientation so at the moment they'll be facing the wrong way. Um, but I'm trying to avoid, like I said, the uh, sort of kinks in the pipe so I'll still have a bit of a play around with it and then um, decide what to do. So the bit I'm trying to work out at the moment is, so that's where the filler's going to go in this bit here. It's got to be somewhere outside the van. It's got to be somewhere where there's no flow of pipe going into the living area of the van, which you wouldn't do here, because that just goes onto the back and then it would just come through a hole in the side here. Um, that's fairly sturdy, so that'll take the weight of a, an LPG gun on it and a heavy LPG hose filler unit. I'm just trying to get it so that I can route that through, that through the wall without uh, it being hit by the door as the door comes down. So I'm going to have a bit more of a play with that and then uh, I'll come back. Alright, change of plan again. So I've just uh, switched this bottle around. So now I can see both of the fillers. I can get at the, uh, the valves on them easily enough. Uh, there's no kinks in the pipes. That one, the pigtail flows around up there. Okay, that one flows around. Comes, comes around in this and into the side of that one. Front one, nice. Uh, snag free into there and then the filler hose comes down it's got a nice smooth run and we'll run out through the side down there at the bottom I've checked that um, this doesn't get touched by when the door comes down the door will come flat with this bit here uh, so I've stretched the wire across to check that that won't be touched and it's got a, it's got a good centimetre free so um, this looks like the final setup. I've just got to get the uh, filler cap installed now which I keep putting off so I've got to get on with it Okay, so that's the way it's going to go. Uh, I've marked out a bit of tape to show where it's going to fit. Uh, I want it to avoid the uh, um, this little door catch, so it'll come a little bit higher than that, come out the top there. I've checked the door, and the door actually comes down to here, so all of this space is free, because uh, I'm a little bit concerned that it's not going to go far enough back so that I can drill a hole actually in the side. I'm going to have to take a little bit of this supporting stuff out as well, um, but that won't hit the door, so that's fine need to be I can make a bracket to uh, support it so all oh, it's looking good uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the back plate so 
that's the bit that it bolts onto from behind. And I'm going to use that to uh, get the positioning of the holes uh, and whereabouts to want the, uh, the centre hole to go. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to cut the hole for the filler using a uh, hole saw. Uh, check the size of it. So just get underneath and you can see the size of it is good enough diameter for it to fit. How it's going to fit when I've got to bend it round, I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, and I've also just tried popping the front of it in like that, just so I can make sure that it's not going to uh, cut away too much material, that there's nowhere to bolt the, uh, the actual plate in place. And if I just tip it forward, it looks pretty good. Looks like it's going to leave plenty. So, okay, time to cut the hole. Okay, so that's the hole cut. Uh, I've just got the filler, just popped it in. Oh, there's a bit of foam at the back that's making it push it out a little bit. So that's how it's going to fit. Uh, I've noticed that the, the holes are drawn for the um, bolts, we're in a slightly wrong place, so I'm just going to put some more tape on and redraw those to be in the right spot and then uh, bolt it in place and uh, get the uh, hose. I'm going to have to cut a bit off the edge there, you can see, to get the hose I thought I would do. Um, and then the uh, job's good. I've got the bolts left them at home, so I've just been, been to get them and notice you get a template with the uh, <laughs> the bolts. Oh well, I'll do it without the template anyway, so there it is. That's the main hole and then the uh, four holes for the bolts. It's a decent uh, piece of aluminium that, so that's nice and strong. Um, that's the backing plate, that's there, that's going to go on the back and bolt on. Um, the only other thing to say is that to cut these smaller ones, uh, it's the same with the middle one actually, I drilled a pilot hole first. So I did a 3mm pilot hole uh, before I tried to drill these, these are 6mm. In theory, the theory is, uh, what should it be, 28mm but mine, mine's a bit bigger. So yeah, so I'm going to put the... Uh, um, fit the hose now coming down to this you have to tighten the hose up onto the filler bit before you actually put it in so uh, I'll have to make some adjustments inside here so I'll do that now uh, uh, a little challenge so I need to tighten this nut up on to this piece um, before it's actually behind there because there won't be any way to do it once it's behind there so what I can do is tighten it up like this and I found that I can feed the pipe through the hose through disconnected it from up the top here um, and then I'll be able to feed the hose up here and pop it into the little cutout that I've made just here. So all that is going to work fine. Okay, that's the uh, backing plate that comes around and uh, bolts the, um, the front plate on from behind. What I didn't notice is these these nuts I put in, they were a part of the pack. Um, you have to push them in with a pair of pliers, so they are captive and I didn't realise that. So I tried to put one on with my fingers behind there, I've managed to drop it and it's actually got into the uh, um, the skirts of the plastic at the back so it's impossible to get at so I'm going to have to go and find another one of those where I can finish it off. I'm off out this afternoon so I'm not going to be able to get it done which is a bit frustrating but everything's looking good. I've cut a bit of a gap and everything's lined up so uh, everything needs tightening up up here and then it'll need a, a test but I'm going to have to find another one of these nuts now. Ah, you monkey. Alright, uh, I just popped home and got that uh, nut I needed and popped it on. So um, this is the finished install now. So you can see that's the filler cap just there. Lift the dust cover off it. So nicely screwed in. That's, I'm really pleased with that actually, that's really solid. Um, good location. So uh, if I just open the locker. Bear with me a second. So there you can see the pipe running in. Let's cut a small section of the um, fiberglass away. But uh, I'm happy that that is uh, metal, so if there is any tiny bit of rubbing, it won't actually impact the high pressure hose that's coming off it. So then that's uh, coming through into the uh, the filler pipe. So that filler pipe's joined to this uh, bottle as well, so both will get filled up at the same time. Um, you can see that uh, I've tightened all the connections up now. So I've tightened them up, finger tight, and then I've given them a few more turns of the uh, the spanner. Um, I've not uh, actually tested it yet, so the system's completely empty at the moment. What I'll do is I'll just uh, tighten both the uh, offlets, uh, the offtakes, uh, so that the uh, system's closed down. 
go and pop a bit of LPG in it, a few litres, and then uh, I'll open them up and you get a, a spray that comes with the system that you can use to check whether you've got any little bubbles coming out, so whether you need to tighten any of the connections up. Apart from that, that is the system done. So what we'll do when we come to a uh, fill up, I'll just close that down, we won't actually need to open the, uh, the locker door, which is handy. You just come, you pop that open, and it just comes undone. And then, try and do this one-handed, you screw your uh, connector in, whichever one you need from whichever country you're in, so that's the British one going in. And just giving it a little bit to tighten up a bit more. And there you go, you put the gun on that, fill it up, and then when you're done, you take the gun off, there's a big burst of gas, this gets really cold, so it's not so cold that it's going to hurt you, but it's not that pleasant. So it's, and then once you're done, you just unscrew it again. Oh, drop it in there, don't do that. Uh, and shut the... So clean off. It's okay. And then shut the cap, and that's it. Job done.